Hello, in this presentation we will talk about the receipt of payment and how to record it within the software of QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been following along with us, we will be continuing here with the Get Great Guitars. If you have not and just want to know how to record the receipt payment, that is okay as well. That's what we will cover here. If uh, you have the backup and would like to restore directly to this point in time, then the way to do that is to restore the backup with the file tab and the open and restore. We are entering data as we go here, so we're going to be relying on past data and continuing on with future data, hopefully getting to the same point at the end of this. So in order to move forward, we do need some data to work with or to have some conceptual idea of the data that would be in place, meaning what has happened in the past, and what are we doing now, why are we doing it, and what are we expecting to happen in the future. As we look at that, a good tool to visualize that is, of course, the home page, which is where we are now. If you're not here, you can get here by going to the Company tab and Home page. I also like to have the open windows open. Notice that they're not here at this point when you open the program. So I'm going to go to View and Open Windows so we can see what we have currently open. Note that shows me we have a lot of stuff open, or I do, <laughs> that I don't need open. I'm going to go ahead and close these out uh, just so we can start just with the Home tab. So I'm going to clean everything out here, and I recommend doing this a lot of times when you're opening QuickBooks just so you're starting from one point and uh, working working from there so you can have the relevant information open in your tabs now we just have the home tab open we are going to be working with receiving payment so the concept here is that we build someone or we invoiced someone and we expect to receive payment we can imagine receiving that payment in the mail so we can see that uh, flow within the customers section so within a customer section typically if we are in a business where we do the work and then get payment in the future then typically we're going to have an invoice then we're going to get payment and then we're going to deposit it so we need to have a picture or an idea of those three components as we as we build the accounting system as we build what we're going to be putting together and how this information is going to flow through our project is going to be a store so we buy and sell guitars so oftentimes if we were to sell the guitar within the store we would create a uh, create sales receipt and not an invoice in that we would hopefully get payment at the point in time that we sell the guitar and then we would just deposit that information if on the other hand we got paid or we sold the guitar and we expect to get paid in the future this would be a type of setup that we would expect to see more in a lot of service type organizations, a law firm or a bookkeeping firm where the work is done. You send out the invoice either by email or by mail and you expect to see, receive a check in the mail for that. You have to first, in order to send out the invoice, you got to count up the time and whatnot that was spent. In that case, uh, we would typically have the invoice going out and then receive payment at a future date and then we're going to record the deposits that's what we're going to work on here we're going to say we had uh, created the invoice and now we're going to get a payment if you want to know how to create the invoice we did that last time we created a couple invoices we're going to create a couple more in the future and now we're going to take the payment that we're assuming has been received in the mail we got a check in the mail and we're going to record a payment note what we are not doing we're not recording deposit here so we're going to record payment first there's a few reasons for this that we, we need to understand uh, because it's a bit different than we might learn in accounting courses where we basically skip this middle step. What we normally do is we say we go into accounts receivable. People owe us money for work we did. We record sales and accounts receivable with the invoice. And then we just get the cash or the check and we debit the checking account or cash, which in our case in QuickBooks would be the checking account, increasing the amount of cash we have. And we would credit the IOU account, the accounts receivable account, reducing the amount of money owed to us. The reason QuickBooks has an added step here is that we might get multiple checks within one day. And our goal is to deposit all those checks at, at the end of the day or deposit them regularly. As we deposit them, we're going to group them together, not by individual check that we have received, but by groups of checks, by deposited checks. And therefore, we, we need to be able to, to put the deposit into our system in the same format as the checks so that it ties out to what the bank statement says. When we compare our information within the bank reconciliation to the bank statement, 
a lot easier if all the deposits are grouped in the same way as they are on both the bank statement as well as QuickBooks. So what we need to do here is have an interim step. We're going to say these are all the checks that we are holding on to and uh, we're going to put them into a different account called undeposited funds and then we're going to go ahead and deposit them then grouping all those checks together uh, in the same format that they'll be seen on the bank reconciliation. So that's the crucial step. It's a step that's really misunderstood and gets messed up all the time the, and there is a purpose to it. And there is a way that we can bypass that middle step but it's worth doing for for many businesses so let's take a look at it. So we got a check in the mail. We, we issued the invoice. Now we got the check in, in the mail. We're going to say receive payment. The check in the mail came from Anderson, so we're going to say the Anderson is who gave us the check. If we type that in, we'll then get the, the individual. We can also select the drop down and find our list of customers and pick the customer. And there we have it. Now, what drops down here is the information in terms of what Anderson owes us. And we could just check that off. Note, it's kind of a double check here. If we were to write in the amount of the check that we're holding that we got from the customer, and then match it out down here. If we were just to select this item down here, we got a 5,000 check, it fills it out automatically up here and it gives you a little um, message in order to tell you that. If you do not enter the amount received, QuickBooks automatically calculates the amount as you select each individual in the table. So I'm gonna say, okay. So we selected that and it put the amount there. That hopefully is the amount of, of course, the check. So we're gonna say we got a check in the mail. We'll label a type of payment. The date that we got this is going to be 01-12-21, that being January 12th, 2021. We will be working this problem in the year of 2021. And the check number, it's optional field. You don't have to have it. This isn't our check numbers. These are the check numbers from the individuals giving us the check. We're going to type in 8755 for the check number. When we record this then, what's going to happen is we're going to say the receivable should go down from Anderson because they paid us. And where does the other side go? You might think that it should go into our checking account, debiting cash or increasing cash. But it's going to go into this undeposited funds and that's what we're talking about. It's going to go in there first, then we're going to group the deposits and then deposit them as a group sum. If you want some more detail on that, you can. this little icon gives you um, a description of that. It's going to be deposited into undeposited funds. We'll take a look at it. If you want to turn off that preference and you want to deposit it directly into the bank here at this point, then you could go into preferences here and follow these uh, instructions and turn off that preference. And when then you deposit here, it would go directly into the checking account. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close this and we'll take a look at what happened so remember we received we received payment so we would think that uh, cash would go i mean cash would go up in some form it's going to be undeposited funds and the amount owing us money would go down those two items on the balance sheet therefore let's take a look on the balance sheet we're going to go to reports we're going to go to company and financial we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet and the standard balance sheet. We're going to change the date to 12-31-21. Uh, I'm also going to change the date range over on this side. So I'm going to customize the report. So whenever we auto zoom or drill down on the information, it will then give us a range of dates as we look at the transaction report or in essence, the general ledger. 01-01-21. So we're going to say OK. And then we can take a look. So we're going to say cash probably not going to be the amount that was affected. What is affected, and they put it down here not into cash. They put it into other uh, current assets. So this undeposited funds is in essence cash we have on hand that we have not yet deposited. So if we double click on that, we see there's our item here from Anderson. The other side being accounts receivable. If we double click on that we see the actual customer payment that we just filled out. So I'm going to close that out. Close that out. The other side of it then should be in the receivable. So we'll double click on the receivable. And we see there's the 5,000 that was paid uh, for the receivable here. So there's the other side. If we double click on it, we see that same customer payment. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close that out. One more important report that this will, will appear on is the customer uh, report, the accounts receivable, the subsidiary report. So we're going to go down to reports 
customers and receivables and we're going to go to uh, customer balance detail and then we can see again anderson here we have the five thousand was owed five thousand then paid and now uh, we only anderson only owes that uh, 430 and that is what is now remaining if, again if we double click on this payment we will get back to that information same form we filled out same customer payment so at this point in time uh, we have this account which looks really funny on a financial statement because it's only something that you really use in quickbooks and therefore what we need to do is get that into the checking account if you have a bunch of uh, amount in the in here that's not in the checking account then there's probably an error and that happens a lot so there's probably something that you got to go in there and clean that out if you reconcile the checking account then you can be fairly confident the checking account is correct if you have say five thousand in this um, in this account and you have no checks that you have plan on going to the bank and cashing anytime soon then that amount is probably incorrect and you got to uh, figure out how to how to fix that uh, we're going to go back to uh, the home tab and we're going to receive another customer payment and receive it from uh, jones guitar same concept already invoiced now we're going to receive the payment so we got the check in the mail we're going to say received payments when we get that check in the mail we have to type in from the received from the client or customer of jones so i'm just going to type that in there it will then populate jones guitars and then we're going to put the amount or the information or the payment type i'm going to say this time we got paid with a uh, credit or debit just to see uh, the difference there i'm not going to enter the payment information at this point i'm just going to just to show that we have a different information this will give us this will give us basically a reference of the payment type here and i'm going to say done and there we have that information and the amount then uh, again we could type it in here or we can put that information down here and just click on the related invoice this being the 7005 it gives us that message that it will populate the payment amount for that same amount we're going to say okay that is good so this ma this number should match this number note that if a payment was received for less than the invoice amount we are applying to that's okay you just make this number less and then there'll still be an amount due notice we have two amounts here the original amount amount due and the payment amount we have three amounts here and the payment amount so uh if we only have a partial payment that is okay we're going to say we paid the entire uh invoice of seven five that was on there as of twelve thirty one. our beginning balance for this particular problem and we still have this invoice on uh, january 12th that we need to take care of at a later point once again what will this do it will decrease the amount owed by jones in the ar accounts receivable account and that'll put an amount in undeposited funds so we're going to say save and close for this item and then once again we'll take a look at the balance sheet it says it needs to refresh i'm over here in the open items tab we're going to say click on that and once again it's not going into cash where did it go it went into the undeposited funds if we double click on it we now see that item there double click on it we see our uh, payment close it out close it out other side in the receivables here and there it is again so there's our payment double click on it and we see the item so those are two sides there's our double entry accounting system in practice here's our balance sheet equaling out in terms of assets still equaling liabilities and equity which is a good sign if we take a look at the last report we looked at in terms of the customer report reports customers receivables and we have the customer balance detail customer balance detail for jones showing once again that payment of seven thousand five hundred double clicking on that we see our customer payment and there is that we're going to do this one more time so i'm going to close this out close this out and we're going to go back to the home tab and now we have another customer paid us it's been a good day for payments here smith guitars is going to pay us and therefore we already invoiced we're receiving a payment for that invoice note that these two are related of course this information that we are getting within the received payments generated from the invoice that was created so we're going to go into receive payments and this is going to be from uh, smith guitars so i'm going to hit the drop down this time and just pick smith there we go 
and we're going to tab through this. I'm going to say payment uh, is for that 8,000. Now I'm just going to type on or click on it again. That's our beginning balance that was owed from to us from Smith. Uh, the credit card is still selected. I'm going to keep that. And, and notice that when we put the credit card information at this point in this format, it's really just a reference. So we're recording the payment that had been uh, received through the credit card into our system, mainly tracking the fact that Smith doesn't owe us money anymore. That's the main thing that uh, QuickBooks is doing here and recording the deposit tracking uh, the cash that we have then received. So that's going to be the same information. We have this information here. Once again, it's going to increase the undeposited funds and decrease the receivables related to Smith's guitars. We're going to save and close that. We will check it one more time on the balance sheet. We see that we have a uh, accounts receivable and accounts receivables going down once again. So the account receivables going way down this day. <laughs> and we're going to close that out. And we're going to go to the other side of it will be in undeposited funds. And there we have that. So now we have this big uh, number of checks in undeposited funds. We should be going to the bank very shortly if we have that uh, information there. Note we're going to deposit it into the bank. And our goal when we deposit it into the bank is going to be to group it in a format that ties out to how it will be grouped on the balance sheet uh, when we I'm on the bank statement when we see the bank statement because what we want to do is tick and tie out when we reconcile the bank statement what we have in our books to what is in the bank statement easiest way to do that is to group the deposits in the same format in both locations we will do that in a future presentation